stars off. Because I did the other movie reviews last week. Yeah, why not? I mean, I, I guess I should do something this week, right? <sighs> I don't know. It's, yeah. I feel as though I'm due for another break, but whatever. Um, all you're, right, you're, folks. You're, you're required 15 minute breaks. 15 minutes every 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, folks. So me and Carl both went and saw Star Trek, albeit separately. Separately, yeah. We don't um, see movies together. I was upset because there were no bald captains who sang "Make It So" over and over again. But you know, you make do. So this movie, we got a lot of stuff right. I want to just point that out. If you watch the the preview, a lot of stuff right. Yeah. It, they really built up to that Khan thing, and it was so anticlimactic. My name is Khan, and everyone in the theater going, oh, no kidding, really. Oh, yeah, go on, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we didn't see that one coming. I will say this, though. There's a couple of things that surprised me. J.J. Abrams took a story that is very old, very famous at this point. And when I say right. old, I mean decades old. Yeah, um, which is... And you go watch Wrath stories. of Khan, yeah. there's a lot of story elements from Wrath of Khan. However... J.J. Abrams put his own little spin on it to make it somewhat unique and somewhat interesting, albeit right. they wussed out in the end. I'm not going to go into it too much, but they reverse the whole. They reverse a major plot point from Wrath of Khan. Those of you familiar with that original film. But but to be fair, they're supposed to kind of in this new timeline. Yeah, so, I, so to speak, I don't know? mind the fact that they did the switching. The thing that I mind is the you know the Jesus juice that is Khan's blood. So, yeah, yeah. but um, another thing that I really interesting about this movie, though, we meet the Klingons for the first time. Yes, I was so psyched about that. Yeah, part. which apparently are all into punk metal. Did you know that? <laughs> they all got gauges and a lot of piercings. It's, it's, I mean, it's, they're scary and they're very intimidating. Like right. everyone on screen, like they hold their presence. Right, yes, and, um, yes. The Klingons are in it for maybe what? It's one scene, but maybe but, a two-minute scene, but it, but it hint, holds presence. But it helps hint at, like, maybe the third movie might be the Klingon War. Oh, definitely. You know, like, like they, that, yeah. they keep mentioning that a war is coming the entire right, right, time. Exactly. And, they, I mean, it's pretty obvious because they land on this planet, and they're just, like, you can tell they're, they're prime. They're ready yeah, for a yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the tensions um, are high, yeah. It's like us in North Korea. I will say this. All the characters still held up, um, except uh, Simon Pegg. Pretty much wasted character in this entire movie. No, no but 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 no, wasted was in very, the sense. There no, was because super fun. There, every time he was on screen, though, it was very funny though when he was there. I will say that. I'm not looking for a gag with Scotty. But I, I kind of was. I like, All right, he, but I'm just saying, like they, they threw him on, away. What, they about, threw him what away. about the running through the corridor? He's like, I'm running still. I mean, I know, but I'm just saying, on. it's like he was like a throwaway character just to get comic relief and not only that, but they gave him his own little separate storyline that converged later on. Right. You almost forget about him. Yeah. But I mean, uh, aside from that. You know, all the actors, Chris Pine, you know, Mr. Heroes. Yeah, Zachary Quinto. Thank you. Um, Quinto actually holds the movie. Oh, yeah. Um, it's like almost well, he, as though Kirk doesn't matter in well, this he, film. The same thing happened with the first one. It was almost like he's such yeah. a central... It's almost. really almost like J.J. Abrams has a love affair with Spock. Because Spock ends up dominating, but he needs Kirk to balance him out in this universe. It's like it's like Kirk brings the humanity out of Spock. Yeah, and it's like, which is the reverse of what happens in the TV series, which is mm -hmm. like... Um, Kirk relies on both Bones and Spock to balance out because right. Bones is all humanity. He's passion. Yeah. And um, that's the doctor, by the way, for those of you not following. Yeah, played by Carl Urban. Thank you. And, um, and then Spock balances out with pure logic, and it's kind of like his counsel, and he's sitting there as George right. Washington balancing in between logic and gut instinct and gamble right. as the captain, which is what makes him a successful captain. In this series it's almost as though somehow, they say somehow, he's damaged it for doing that right it's almost like somehow kirk is incompetent I exactly he, somehow yeah. somehow he by luck he gets to be captain when really clearly spock is the one who should be captain and yeah. kirk should be his what first his first officer first officer helping balance out that hum human hum humanistic part of him yeah but at the same time it's for some reason spock keeps taking second chair right um, sure, yeah. however i will say this uh, like i said the spock role carries this film right. again and, 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 and not, not to anyone else's detriment. It's just that the characters all seem to be linked through Spock. Right. And I think that also the reason that they focus on Spock was because of the major plot point of Wrath of Khan. Those of you who saw Wrath of Khan, the original, uh, Spock dies in the end of that. So it's right. like they were playing off of fans' expectations no. by really focusing it on Spock. And then, and then, and of course, they uh, bring back Leonard Nimoy for like a small cameo, which I wasn't too impressed with, by the way. Well, I was kind of hoping we would just forget about him, but they actually go to him for information right. on the other universe. And he even hints at, you know, yes, I did through, you know, like 
Yeah. For sacrifice. There's not sacrifice, but he says we had to like sacrifice a lot to. Yeah, we lost a, a good deal. Yeah. You know? But um, so the and uh, let's just mention uh, Benedict. Benedict Cumberbatch. Mr. Sherlock. Yes, his that voice. He was very interesting as as Khan. Yeah, and I really wish we could have had more of him. Yeah, it, I mean, by the time he actually takes control of a starship and yeah. gets to the really interesting stuff, it's over in ten minutes. Right. It's like it's, oh. uh, it's like by the time he can really do something, because he's because he's it's over. He's, he's a main villain, but his, his he's his, not the main villain though. Well, That's the well, thing. I would say he's a secondary villain exactly. in this because there's the shadow puppet That's thing true. going on in back. Right. Which we won't. Yeah, we'll go into too much. I'll go into a little bit. Robocop. Come Robocop. on. Really? Oh my god. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, anyway. I, mean, I was freaking out. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, Robocop's in this movie. Right? Yeah, I was like, ah! <laughs> anyway, um... But, uh, you but, go ahead with yours and then I'll jump to but my review. But, yeah, uh, he hit on a lot of things. I will say, though, um, one of the negative things I felt, felt about the movie was, um, the Alice Eve character was in there very short and she was... She, I don't even know why she was really needed for the film. Uh, and her undressing. It's, that you know? was why she was needed. Yeah, I think, um, yeah. Let's some people, some, sex appeal into this some people are speculating that she's going to be Kirk's love interest from the following movies because he's the only, she's the only one that he hasn't directly hit on. But, you know, I say that, but then yet in the movie, I felt like her and Bones were starting to make a connection. Yeah, well. But anyway, um, and the weird thing was the one of the main writers, David Lindelof, he actually said in an uh, interview later, like, this movie kind of could have been PG if there were a couple of elements pulled out of it because this movie doesn't really have a lot of PG-13 like, he's like, if we'd have pulled some of the language out and that part with Alice Eve out, out we would have had probably a PG rating, which would have been really interesting for such a dark, kind of a dark movie, you know? You could have maybe pulled away with a PG. Into Darkness Yeah. is a dark movie. Go, go on. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> also, but positive things. Uh, I saw it in 3D only because they had a really early showing and I wanted to go see it with a friend of mine and 3D was the only thing available. 3D, I'm not, still not impressed with as a whole. This movie, I probably. What about the lens flares? There were lens L flares everywhere. Lens yeah. flare universe is still a go. Oh, cool. oh yes, yeah, a go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, one one future. thing though is in the end, around the end of the, maybe second half of the movie, when a lot of the action's ramping up, um, the music and the action and the, and the way the sound plays in the theater, I felt really engaged into the movie. My heart was pumping fast. I J.J. Was Abrams is, if nothing yeah. else, very dramatic. Like, you yeah. think, that, like, he had this one element of drama, and he's, like, keeps upping the ante right. until it's so ridiculous that you don't even realize you're holding your breath. Right. Specifically, what the scene I'm thinking about is the space jump scene. Right, this, yeah. Where they literally fire Kirk out of the Enterprise like he's a bullet, and he's flying through space, right. he has to dodge all this stuff, and then it's like, oh my god, you have to hit this exact moment, oh, by the way, your helmet has a crack in it, by the way, you're gonna miss it, by the way, the right. guy opening the door yeah. isn't there, it's just like, oh my that, god! Well, that scene, and when they're on this little, well, they're on Earth, on this little carrier thing, flying around Earth, the city of London, uh, the very end with Spock fighting uh, Khan. Shh, shh. They're gonna fight. What do you expect? Come on. Uh, you know. Spock dies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're fighting, and you just you feel that. You know, you're kind of starting to get on the edge. You see, like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? How's it gonna happen? What What's the ending gonna be? Um, but that's all I got to say about it. You know, it was, I liked it a lot. Robocop. You know, <laughs> my rating. I'm gonna go ahead and give my rating. It was matinee. I'm bumping it up to green because I thought it was a really good movie, and everyone should go see it. I'm going to temper myself with matinee because, as I said, I was slightly disappointed with J.J. Abrams at that very last moment where he actually had made a strong movie and pulled The Dark Knight Rises on us and wussed out at the last second. Yeah. Um, that's about as close to a spoiler as you're going to get, folks, but that's, that's my reasoning. That's why it, it held up. Fans of the first one will enjoy this. It's kind of like oh, yeah. the same thing I said about Sherlock Holmes' Game of Shadows. Um, you didn't like the first one, you're not going to like this one. You like the first one, you're going to love this one. And surprisingly, thing, one of the big things the studio is worried about is that we say if you like the first one, that is that because the first one was made like four years ago, mm -hmm. that a lot of the audience, that the core audience they're always looking for, which is like the 18 to 25 crowd, is not, go, is, is not going out to see this movie, though. Because the 18 to 25 crowd is now the 25 to 30. 34 year old, yeah. Right. So. A lot of the people, we're at home, people they were at home watching sitcoms, getting through our right. first marriage, you know? <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people who were, old, you know, the 1825s that were like 10 year olds or, you know, teenagers, they didn't see the first one. They're not as invested in it as maybe we are, you know, or even older generations that love They're the They're busy old Star watching Trek. Zach Galifianakis do cocaine. <sighs> he doesn't do, do, do cocaine. Not on screen, at least. He's not know. Dr. Roxo? <laughs> Whatever. We'll be Ma right back. Matinee. Yeah, <laughs> green. We'll be right back. <laughs>